Sometimes the things you see in the shadows are more than just shadows. This happened on the Halloween night of 2008, and is not my own experience, but that of my brother, sister, and close friends. It is long, so bear with me. I lived in Canberra during my childhood, and Canberra is known to be the most haunted location in Australia given its history. Growing up, I never took the paranormal seriously. However, my sister and her three friends did, in fact, they were all Wiccans. On occasion, they would try and contact spirits in the closest cemetery at daytime, but would only experience slight things like really cold air or hearing footsteps. On Halloween 2008, they decided to go down to the cemetery at midnight, and my brother and his friend also went along. They were all around the age of 13 to 19. I was 14. For some stubborn and stupid reason, I decided to stay home. I now know that I will regret that decision for the rest of my life. This was definitely a very haunted place, and it is also worth mentioning that it is one of the oldest churches in Australia, being built in 1840. It is called St. John's the Baptist Church. Excitedly, they walked down, but not really expecting to see anything amazing. When they reached the cemetery, it was all serious business. They sat down in a circle and held hands, with a candle in the center. Then my sister read something aloud from a book. When it ended, they were all looking around for about ten minutes, and one of my sister's friends was the first to see something. This thing was glowing a gray color, and it seemed to be fading in and out of focus. It was twenty meters away at the side of the churchyard, they were just watching it for a few minutes, whispering to each other. Then my sister and her three friends started slowly walking towards it. As they got closer, it became clearer and clearer that it was a ghost of a young girl in 19th century clothing. They slowly recognized the details and folds in her dress and hair as she was twirling her arms and spinning. They just stared at the figure, silently smiling in awe. They were not threatened at all. She was not aggressive in the least. They always tell me how amazing it was, and I'm still so jealous. My brother and his friend started approaching it slowly as well by the hand gestures of the others. Next to the ghost, there was an old big tree, and they noticed the dirt around it was being flown up in the air, and they started hearing this strange, growling sort of noise, like a dying animal coming from that direction. Something started to form there. It slowly took the shape of a humanoid on all fours and was appearing in and out of focus. The girl ghost had disappeared. For some strange reason, it seemed to be digging in the ground very frantically, almost like trying to find something that was buried under the tree. They were happy the seance worked, until now. As the two boys cautiously crept up to them before seeing what it was, the strange ghost had stopped and everything went quiet. Suddenly, it looked straight up at them and saw them as some sort of threat. With no warning, it started to crawl and float towards them very aggressively while making a screeching sound. On this path, it disappeared and then reappeared, getting closer as it did. I would imagine tears forming in their eyes as their version of reality was bending. Never a nice feeling. I told them that they should have stayed to see what it wanted. They replied by saying things like, No way, this thing definitely wanted to hurt us. We all started feeling tremendous fear, and there was no way we would have stayed any longer. As they ran out, excited yet terrified, my brother was the only one to look back and he said it was still chasing them, while the other girl ghost reappeared in the same spot. Well, they did not go back for months after that. The images were still too vivid. Personally, I would have gone back to check it out the same night, along with a lot of other things. When they did call Mum to pick them up, they explained everything they saw to us when they got home. At first, I did not believe them 
then I got a look at my brother's face. It was so pale white, it was almost like there was no blood in his head at all, and they all had terrified looks on their faces. When they were telling me all this, they held back tears, yet they were really excited at the same time. I had no other choice but to believe them. Often it crosses my mind that the ghost of the young girl was luring them closer to the evil-looking ghost. But why? One year later, they went again, and this time I went with them. It was not half as successful, though. I did, after the seance, walk around by myself for a few minutes. I felt very uneasy and threatened for no reason at that moment. I remember vividly seeing something white and ghostly float over my head for about three seconds. Walking away from that area, I stayed about ten meters away from everybody else looking around the graveyard for anything interesting, but saw nothing. After about five minutes later, I swear I saw something unfocused that caught my eye. It was wobbling and flickering like a pale green flame. It was around the same area that the ghost of the young girl was last year. It was so captivating and hypnotic. I looked at it with a smile for about 30 seconds, then walked to the others and said, I think there is something over there, so we walked towards it. I thought, finally, I can have this experience. But sadly, it didn't last that long. As we approached it, it slowly seemed to be different. Surprisingly, all that was there was an old, tall gravestone. Just a gravestone. We felt silly. We all stayed there for about 15 minutes and didn't see anything, only heard the odd noises from inside the church like someone was moving heavy objects. When we walked home, everybody was saying things like, well, that was a dud. I felt angry and upset. To this day, I still wonder what I saw. It couldn't be just a gravestone. They don't fade in and out, glow, move, or change shape. I believe it was a ghost. Sometimes I drive down to the cemetery just to take pictures, hoping to catch something interesting. Out of the 58 I have taken, there is only one picture of a ghost. I have had more experiences, but that's for another time. I'm a late blind. I never used to get scared of any ghost stories and I always enjoyed catching up with any horror movie. My friends considered me lucky because I was spared from watching the horrifying scenes. I never believed in ghosts and paranormal activities, not until August 2015. We are an Anglo-Indian family, and usually it has been our custom to visit our family bungalow for any special occasion. This time it was my cousin's wedding, and a party was thrown at the bungalow. We were gathered over there, and the music was being played at full blast. As I cannot see, I was slightly getting disoriented, and I requested my cousin Elvis to take me to a quiet place where I could relax. He took me to a lawn, which was at the backyard of the bungalow. We were talking to each other when one of my aunts called out for Elvis. He told me that he would come back, and he left. I was standing there. It was quite cold and I could vaguely hear the music from far away. Suddenly, the swing in the backyard started swaying. I was wondering who it was, and I asked if someone was there. There was no reply. I thought that the swing must have moved because of the wind. I started feeling uncomfortable after a while. It was as though someone was watching me. I started feeling very cold, and I sensed a presence standing next to me. Darkest, that person whispered in my ears. I was frightened, because I had never heard such a strange voice ever in my life. I was demanding that person to tell me who it was, but there was no reply. I was trying to find my way out to the party area because I was terribly scared. Just then, Elvis came back to find me in a panic state. He asked me if I was okay, and I questioned him if anyone else was there around me. He told me that there was no one, except for me and him. I requested him to take me away from there, and I didn't speak a word after that. Even after that date, 
that experience gives me a chill in my spine. I can't forget it. I'm not sure if it was a paranormal presence or my cousin's prank on me. But whatever it was, it was scary. I haven't shared it with anyone in my family, because I am sure that they will not believe me. In 1914, the Newfoundland sailed up to the ice with a crew of 250 men. On March 30th, 77 men went out on the ice to kill seals. A mighty storm came up while the men were out. That lasted two days, and the men could not make it back to the ship. When the storm ceased, other ships came and helped the crew of the Newfoundland search for the missing men. Seventy-two were found dead, and five were missing, presumed drowned. The ship sailed home in sorrow, and didn't go to the ice at all the next year. She was considered to be unlucky. To break the curse, the ship was rebuilt and changed so that she would drown no more men. Her new name was the San Blanford, and she was sent to the ice two years after the terrible storm. On the 30th of March, she met up with another ship called the Terra Nova. As dusk fell, a fog rolled in, and the crew of the San Blanford heard the Terra Nova blowing her whistle. This was a signal that she still had men out on the ice. As was customary, the crew of the San Blanford started blowing their whistle, and those above deck could hear voices calling out from the ice, and presumed they belonged to the sailors from the Terra Nova. The two ships kept up their signals until 10 p.m., when the voices ceased, and all were presumed safely aboard ship. The next morning, a sailor from the San Blanford boarded the Terra Nova to conduct some business. The captain of the ship immediately asked the sailor what time the members of the San Blanford crew had gotten aboard the previous night. The sailor was puzzled. We didn't have anyone out on the ice, sir. But the captain and his crew swore that they had seen five men board the San Blanford shortly before 10 p.m. When the sailor returned to the San Blanford, he reported the incident to his captain. The captain took him quietly aside and told him that the report was true. A few members of the night crew had seen five men climb aboard the San Blanford shortly before 10 p.m. The men were wearing tattered clothing that looked as if it had been ripped and worn out by the waves of the sea, and the crew could see right through their shining bodies. One of the sailors on duty that evening had been on the Newfoundland when she lost the 77 men two years ago that very night. He had recognized the faces of the ghosts as those belonging to the five men who were presumed drowned. Their spirits had finally returned to the ship from which they had been lost, and could now rest in peace. I used to live in a house that backs up to a big public open space where there are hiking trails, lots of joggers and people walking their dogs. Anyway, one night, I had a kind of creepy dream that an old lady came into my room and was trying to get me to come outside. The dream woke me up, so I got some water and turned off my fan because it was cold and then I fell asleep again. I went right back into the same dream with this old lady coming into my room and calmly saying, you have to go outside now. I kept telling her no, that it was too cold. I woke up again and my fan was on. I figured I must have just thought I turned it off or the button got stuck. So I got up, turned the fan off again and went back to sleep. 
this time, I had the same exact dream, except she was much older looking in this one, and was really agitated. She was yelling, Go outside! You must go outside! I got up in the dream, and followed her to the hallway. When I got to the hallway, she wasn't there, and then I woke up, and I was actually standing in the hallway. I have never, ever walked around in my sleep before or after this. Also, my fan was on when I went back to my room. At this point, I was freaked out, so I got something to eat and watched TV for a couple of hours. I went back to bed around 5 or 6, and the dream didn't come back. The messed up part is, a couple of days later, I saw that there were police cars in the open space, and when I asked my mom what happened, she said they had found an older woman who was reported missing a few days before. She must have had a heart attack or a stroke or something on the trail by my house, and they had found the body. My boyfriend lives in a Civil War era plantation home on a huge farm. The place has a weird vibe to it. None of the animals will come upstairs. If you bring them up, they will start shaking and dart back downstairs. My boyfriend won't even go in one of the bedrooms. Slave shackles are still hanging up in the basement. The place has apparently been pretty dormant as far as paranormal activity goes for the past year. I've had a couple odd experiences. My boyfriend says that it always gets more active around the holidays, though. In November, right before Thanksgiving, I was staying the night with him. I was about to fall asleep, and I heard something outside. At first, I thought it was the pack of coyotes that roam around the back of the farm, but I heard it again a few seconds after the first time, and it was definitely not a coyote. I immediately woke up and was aware of my surroundings, and I heard it again. It was a woman outside, calling for a man named John. She sounded so panicked and distressed. I heard her call a few more times and I could hear the voice moving around the yard. I was creeped out, but I cuddled up to my boyfriend and went back to sleep. When I told him about it in the morning, he said, That's a new one. Fast forward to exactly a month from my experience. I wake up, and the first thing out of my boyfriend's mouth is, Remember a couple of weeks ago, you heard a woman outside calling for someone? What name was it? John, I said. I heard it last night, he replied. I set a reminder on my phone for the next month, but nothing happened. Really eerie. I've been trying to find out the history of the house to find out if a John ever lived there. I lived in a weird house as a kid, which resulted in chairs being moved in other rooms when I was the only one home, kitchen cupboards opening late at night when no one else was awake. I could be sitting at the computer in a lit room at night and watch as a black cloud would float through a closed door and sit suspended in the air across the room from me. I had footsteps that would walk outside my door and loud breathing. I was so terrified as a child that I ended up sleeping with music playing so I could tune out the noises. I still, to this day, cannot sleep without music playing. I probably could have convinced myself that most of it wasn't real as I aged if it wasn't for a certain weird happening. It was about 11 a.m. in the morning, and my younger brother and I were waiting at home while my mother was out doing jobs. We were waiting for her to come back to pick us up, so we were sitting by the front window, watching for her car. And then, 
We heard the radio playing from my brother's room. We both didn't understand why it was on all of a sudden, so we walked to my brother's room. My brother hid behind me, and I had to walk in the room first. And the second I crossed the threshold, the radio went silent. Upon closer inspection, we realized it wasn't even plugged in, and there were no batteries in the back of it. There was no logical explanation for it to be playing, and my brother, a young boy, had a bunch of matchbox cars and an old car playmat, and he swore and declared that he had parked the cars neatly on it, in lines. But when we went in there, the cars were thrown all over the room. Luckily, we moved out of that house, but my brother and I still remember the radio saga clearly to this day, and it's pretty much the only reason I know I wasn't completely crazy as a child. Before my girlfriend and I moved in together, my girlfriend lived alone in the house she owned. During the course of us dating and me spending the night, she finally explained some of the weird stuff going on in her home. Weird banging sounds happening at all hours. Other weird sounds. Seeing things from the corner of your eye. There were even a couple of times where we saw something walking around the house. She described it as being a robed figure, almost like the Grim Reaper. There was also the feeling that something was watching you from behind. You know, that same feeling that causes the hairs on the back of your neck to stand on end. But the worst was, this constant foreboding feeling coming from one of the unused bedrooms. These happenings scared her so much, simply explaining it caused her to start crying. Now. I'm a skeptic about these things. I'm that guy that would watch all of those paranormal shows and find the logical reasoning for things happening. Since we were just dating at the time, and I really liked her, I wanted to show her my bravado and my lack of fear for the thing in the room. Get out of this house, you fucking asshole. I command you to get out of this house, I yelled into the room. Do not bother her again, you hear me? Or you'll have to deal with me. You do not want to fuck with me. Big mistake. Really big mistake. I spent that night at my girlfriend's. Sometime in the middle of the night, I suddenly woke up to a night terror. I had had them a couple of times before. I didn't experience anything crazy, but this instance felt intentional. It felt like I had poked a bear, and it wanted to show me that it didn't want to be messed with. I woke up to being paralyzed, heart throbbing, being able to see and hear what was around you. I could feel my girlfriend lying down next to me, and I could hear her breathing. This wasn't the scary part, though. The scariest part was hearing. Yes, hearing. Something run out of the room and down the stairs away from me and towards the unused bedroom. I could hear it make its way through the house. I desperately tried to get out of this night terror. I tried telling myself it was just a dream. I tried praying. I desperately tried to call out my girlfriend's name. I knew it was a night terror but still couldn't get out of it. Every time before, I could get out of a night terror by reminding myself what it was. She somehow heard my whispered calls and woke me up. I did not go back to sleep that night. <laughs> 